previously on In the Desert of Set. Something has attached itself to him. We have to get him to the infirmary right away. Where are we going? Up to my shack. What the hell for? Because when I left yesterday, I turned the lights off. It's got a wonderful defense mechanism. You don't dare kill it. Yeah, fuck you too. It's a robot. Ash is a goddamn robot. You gotta be fucking kidding. And, and you, you encourage them in this? Actively. It's most important that each new generation born on summer. I'll be made aware that here the old gods aren't dead. What's the matter? The food ain't that bad, baby. I'm G.B. Merriam. I write about life as a setian in contemporary times with random, long-winded detours into ancient history, classic monster movies, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Won't you join me for today's adventure? If you'd like to read a free electronic print copy of the following recording, please visit desertofset.com. An LV-426 Hallowtide Hootenanny, Part 2. Today's adventure is a continuation of my discussion of my brethren in the LV-426 tradition about spirituality in horror movies. For part one of this discussion, check out episode number 52 of this series. Tony and I met in Texas in 2000, and when we started meeting for Sabbaths back in 2003, the LV-426 tradition was born. Tony was also the frontman for an awesome death metal band called Hexlust, which released the album Manifesto Hexalende in 2015. Patrick and I met in Michigan in 2009, and he joined the LV-426 tradition in 2010. Patrick is a writer, podcaster, and lover of all things play. He also writes for Fix, a blog about video games. Tony and Patrick are not just my friends, but my brothers in set. We treat each other like family, and we are truly blessed to know each other. These gentlemen are also two of the most brilliant and analytical Setians I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. So without any further ado, please welcome Tony and Patrick to the show. Uh, it, those type of movies um, do enjoy... Uh, not necessarily possession films because possession films to me and it's coming off of just literally watching the exorcist two days ago and watching exorcist three like three weeks ago those possession films along with the exorcism of emily rose and all that stuff is is very black and white somebody is controlling you we're going to have a strong monotheistic character take that away and you're going to be a-okay and i don't know i i've been wondering though would there ever be a possession film that's a little more pagan friendly i guess you could say it's called the thing versus <laughs> it's called the thing well no i mean that's <laughs> that, that, that goes more of a, <laughs> I know, you're totally a body right. horror than it does of, 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 We're of, joking. <laughs> of the spiritual side <laughs> no, I agree. I mean, oh, no, you're I, maybe, absolutely right. Your possession you're movies right. are always going to be, yeah, monotheistic. Well, I, don't I think know. a lot. I think a large part of that is partly because of the difference how possession is usually portrayed in different religions, right? Because, like, right. Uh, position or possession. Excuse me. When you discuss 
possession in a Christian context, naturally you're thinking evil spirit invading person's body needs to be cast out through the power of Christ. But what if you're a practitioner of Voudon or Kimbanda? You know, they, 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 they experience things like being ridden by the Lella, you know, uh -huh. where possession is a part of religious worship in those traditions. So like, you know, if you were to try and write a story like that from like a, 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 a an actual voodoo perspective, as opposed to like, you know, Hollywood voodoo perspective or whatever, like the, uh, the possession would be like a good thing. But, you know, it's funny is like all three of us have seen The Exorcist, correct? You know, oh, yeah. well, I think well, numerous yeah. times. But yeah, I mean, when Father Marin comes in, that whole scene to me, he's like no different than an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. You know, totally. here's the other priest who's actually a psychologist who goes, well, while we know the background, all that stuff. And he's like, enough vagina talk. I know what I'm doing. And this is what it's, you know, this is it's black and white. The beast is evil. Yeah. Well, shouldn't we study it and blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. I know what I'm doing. Of course, he dies of a heart attack. So um <laughs> Yeah, things uh, don't but, quite turn out so well for them at the end of that movie. Yeah. And that yeah. It's interesting, movie. though. Uh, I'm glad they took that route because they could have easily been like Father Marin exercises it and everybody's A-OK. -okay, and guess what? You should just go back to Catholicism, yeah. which is still the bottom main idea of that movie is, well, shame on you for not being a Catholic. You need to be a Catholic. Right. You know. <laughs> I think to your point, Glenn, that the, it would be interesting to see – Um. A, a non-christian possession film but i think the only way that that works is if it is something produced by indigenous filmmakers that actually have a a super deep understanding of those traditions and ideas um so i would say if anyone wants to see that you should find indigenous filmmakers to support and, right. and watch their movies because um yeah. that that would go a huge way towards creating something like that well, and I have a question for you. What's that? Before you bring up that, which is, okay, so horror movies in general, whether it be it, we're linking it to the spiritual side or not, we have different viewpoints of what we did when we were younger versus the one we do now versus back in the day. I remember you used to tell me back when you were living in Houston, you know, you would go after school or after work, pick up a six pack, sit down and watch the Jason movies while drinking the six pack. Back then, you and I would just watch the movies for, you know, uh, the, the lewd content and the violence. And now as we're older and we've now learned of the fact that, you know, a lot of the Reaganomics slasher movies were all, you know, a tale of don't do this and this is what's going to happen to you. How has that changed your perspective towards slasher movies where they suddenly now are these movies that take moral high grounds against, you know, premarital sex or drug use or, or alcohol? I mean, do you still enjoy them or do you feel that there's a dampening towards it where you're like, I can't really enjoy this now because this is no different than going to a church hell house on Halloween, or, excuse me, fall festival? That's a very good question. Um, well, the thing about slasher movies is, yes, it, 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 it does, they are, they are infamous for having this sort of built-in dichotomy of, uh, having lots of, lots of young f male and female, but usually it's female characters like taking off their clothes and getting drunk and doing drugs and having fun and being liberated and whatnot. And then getting killed in excessively gory, violent ways by these psychopaths. And especially in the time of Reaganomics, the, the height of the 80s, it's very easy to read that as like a judgment against those kinds of behaviors like no you shouldn't be doing this these characters are clearly being punished for doing those things but you got to bear in mind these are exploitation movies they were made for one purpose and were for one purpose only to exploit the market and to exploit the teenage market and uh, in particular they're 
they're targeting teenage boys, teenage boys right. of, of the eighties in particular. I think too, something that these movies do is yes, they, 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 on a surface level seem to moralize about like punishing the teenagers for doing the for for having sex and drinking and partying but also over the course of um less the halloween films more f- the the you know friday the 13th series the nightmare on elm street series and then you know the the worst slasher movies the the the, the cheap knockoffs of of those movies mm-hmm. is make you like the killers in them they make the killers into these kind of charismatic characters that now much of the fandom around these movies centers on a love for the bad guys so it's almost like and i think that that was intentional from a from a marketing perspective even they want you to to fall in love with the killers and so well i think it does both like i think it does both things where it's like more they moralize about some of this stuff but also you're kind of supposed to like the bad guy the most <laughs> in the end anyway right. um, well, which both reinforces it up... and kind of i think distances from that goal right well though i mean i think a lot of people like the bad guys because of the fact that i think right especially right now we're in a culture that loves punishment and justice we love it totally. and those people act as the judge of it and they are also the executioner and people want that feeling of "Mm, i'm justified i'm justified in my belief that these people are doing things wrong judge jason go out and behead all of them (laughs) now i feel good about myself so that's why i think everybody loves the bad guy so much because the bad guy is the judge bad the bad guy is the executioner so a lot of people obsess over that that's why i'm so i mean i know we're talking about horror movies but at the same time you can't not talk about what's going outside Uh, you know you see so many people especially down here horror movie well, and everything's well, political shit. I mean, too. You see, All our media is. Well, I mean, you see everywhere, you know, especially in where I live, like everybody's got the fucking Punisher on their back windshield. <laughs> and everybody has Don't the, even get me the started black on and that. white American. <laughs> well, everybody has the black and white flag with the blue stripe in the middle. And I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, why is everybody so obsessed with punishing? everybody is and that goes back to the horror movies of well you know i love freddy krueger because he shows those rotten kids what's what you know may may not come out and say that but subconsciously that's what they like because freddy krueger is the judge same thing with Mm -hmm. jason he is the judge i mean why can't everybody just be like me and just accept that judge dread is the ultimate judge and you know I mean, I think that like, so I think that the inclusion of the fact that the sex and the violence are in these movies is just to satisfy the desire of the target audience to see sex and violence. Yeah. It's not not meant to communicate an anti-sex message. Otherwise we'd be seeing like church churches as the producers or whatever, like church groups would, be, would have been producing these movies. But, and, and trust me, some of those, some of those movies as you've seen on the cinema snob, Tony, some of those fucking church movies ought to have been slasher movies. <laughs> um, well, I remember in high school I was invited and I didn't go, but I was invited to a quote unquote hell house. And I was like, the hell is a hell house. And they're like, oh, it's it's this thing where we show cautionary tales, you know, of like this couple who are going to have premarital sex, but then they wind up drinking and driving and they get decapitated. And I remember they described to me they they actually simulated the decapitation and they had fake blood and stuff like that. So I'm like, I love how Christianity condones horror movies, yet they love to peddle it on the side as no. this thing where it's <laughs> what like, else is yeah, new you sure hate christ it. yeah was like, you sure hate it <laughs> yeah you sure hate this but you sure love peddling it well i mean what is the passion of the christ the fucking you know it's a snuff film <laughs> it's a fucking gory ass snuff movie exactly i mean like that is like that is definitely exploitation violent cinema right there mm-hmm. you know but Anyway, 
getting back to the original question though about how do i feel about slash movies now how i feel about slash movies now is i actually like very few of them uh, yeah when i was a young lad when i was a young typhonian foal i used to enjoy quite a few more of them but as i've grown older over the years i've just some of these movies are really bad and some of them actually are pretty sick um well, i think it speaks to like there's a lot of modern horror that i really love and thankfully over the last few years we've started to see a renaissance build in horror right. with um you know like ari aster films and and um films like mandy and stuff that are that are really great movies um but for so long slasher movies sort of dovetailed together with home invasion movies yes. and i explicitly hate home invasion movies uh and what's interesting is like yes michael myers invaded homes but it never felt like the point of the movie was to to make you feel afraid of the sanctity of your home being violated it was right that just was sort of a consequence of michael myers That's doing true. the thing that he does but right. um the the modern slasher take of like oh it's not that they're supernatural forces it's that they are just randomly picking a house on a street and invading it and then torturing the people who live in it is like awful it's just icky yeah i, I don't just, like it, that it's just not it's not entertaining and it's um it, it it it's it it's they're manipulative in ways that isn't fun um because they're preying on 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 fears that are not the fun fears to emulate and and practice right now i i still enjoy the halloween movies and i still enjoy most of the jason movies the friday the 13th i really only enjoy two of the freddy movies and that's the first two I, I would really, concur. I don't really I, like the rest of the Nightmare series. I like Freddy versus Jason because it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's absurd. Um, it's I don't think it's a good absurd. movie, though. <laughs> it's fun. It's a popcorn yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, apart from those, apart from those, and maybe like the Slumber Party Massacre, which I thought was kind of a funny one, a funny take. It was actually written and directed by women. Um, apart from exceptions like those, I've, I've generally turned sour to the slasher genre. Like I'm really much more engaged in like, uh, sci-fi horror and British folk horror, you know, mm -hmm. like things, things we've just been talking about, like alien and the wicker man and the thing, you know, Do you guys truly feel, I mean, now that there's been some time since the release of this one, which was the Rob Zombie Halloween. God, that's we're now going on what fifteen years now. It's been it's been out fifteen years. I think it came out in 05, didn't it? Uh, two thousand seven, the Rob Zombie one. Yeah, two thousand seven. Okay, I saw so the thirteen. Movie in the theater. Yeah. Thirteen years. I was like, how do you guys feel of Rob Zombie's vision of the fact that he's just like this Terminator versus the Carpenter, even with the with the sequel Legacy, where it has to deal with the fact that Michael may have been controlled by outward forces versus this one is a little more black and white where it's like oh he's just evil i don't think that rob zombie has ever even made a passing film i think every one of his movies yeah. is absolute garbage i think we're all holding on to that time in college that we watched house of a thousand corpses and we're like wow this is rad that movie sucks too sorry if you're a zombie fan they're all bad all the first 30 minutes Devil's... are fun the rest of the movie's terrible i, I watched <laughs> devil's rejects again uh like a year and a half ago that movie is just awful um yeah it is. and 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 i think uh you know halloween is obviously um one of his best films from a like um having talent and having and cinematography and like production value perspective but it's also one of his worst films from a writing perspective and obviously i mean what he does with that universe and that character is a complete disgrace and i can't i can't if he watched those movies and was a fan of them and created that from it it shows me that he has no understanding of what makes the original movies so special um and I think that at, with time, what I think is interesting is more the wider um, impact that his work and the work of people like Eli Roth to a degree too had on the horror genre in sort of creating, sort of building it into this 
genre where the focus throughout the 2000s and 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 the you know the first few years of the 2010s in mainstream horror was largely around showing awful pain inflicted on people which is not the point of horror or what makes it interesting um and and so i think it is interesting from the, the, the rob zombies halloween is interesting from that perspective because it's kind of like where there was like this crescendo of just wanting to show people being tortured um and then that wave kind of rode for the next several years and now we found this interesting medium happy medium where you have films like midsummer that are like awful to watch and horrifying and disgusting and brutal but also don't have that same feeling of like you're only doing this because you want to show a woman getting stabbed over and over again um so well, I think also Rob Zombie's Halloween plays on the fact that there's too much 70s nostalgia being totally. drummed up. So, yeah. like, here's Halloween, the original. Uh, people get stabbed, stabbed, done. Same thing in the other one, more gory, but the fact there's a Kiss lunchbox behind you. Don't you remember Kiss? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Look, which yeah. is, there's this in the background. Which is much <laughs> of Rob Zombie's <laughs> filmmaking in a nutshell is this obsession with nostalgia and, like, uh, it's it's a I, we could do a whole podcast well, it drums up, <laughs> it's oh, yeah, i know it, but it drums up gen xers who were like oh my totally. god i remember that time this is why this movie is so better than the other one and you're like really so I, I i just reviewed my top five what i count as my top five halloween movies uh for my website and I purposely avoided discussing the Rob Zombie ones because I try not to, uh, unlike some people, I try, I try to only review things that I like because I don't really want to tear people apart. And sometimes even with things I like, I will tear them apart a little bit, but I figure like it's okay if I like it because I'm just expressing it. It's all part of why I love whatever it is I'm talking about. Like, um, like in my Halloween 6 review, you know, where I'm talking about how this is a really insanely fucking goofy movie that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. But here's why I love it, you know. Um, but I have nothing positive to say about <laughs> the Rob Zombie movies. I have nothing positive to say. I will try to keep it short. All, all that I, my biggest problem, my biggest fundamental problem with the Rob Zombie movies is that he attempts he attempts to to transform michael myers into a sympathetic protagonist and dr loomis and laurie strode are both turned into really horrible despicable characters who are just toxic and ugly and hateful and he's turned this story that's originally about really good noble hearted people facing off against ultimate evil into a story about, you know, nasty, despicable people getting what they deserve from the killer that they helped create, you know? And that to me is a completely fucking different story from what John Carpenter's Halloween is all about we're not supposed to, you know, unlike with like Freddy Krueger and Jason and, and those other slasher movies where they always have like, well, not always, but the later ones, they have, you know, the tendency to make you kind of root for the, the bad guy. Um, Michael Myers should never be the protagonist. Michael Myers should never be the character that we're supposed to feel sorry for. He should never be you know he should never be humanized like that because that 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 takes you're doing something wrong if you make a halloween movie with a human michael myers and with dehumanized dr loomis and laurie strode and that that's that's the end of it that's that's what i'll say yeah. all i have to say apart from that is that the new 2018 halloween was just what i fucking wanted after those good movies. Yeah, that one yeah. was good. <laughs> it was just what I fucking wanted. A return to form. Uh, you know, I know I understand some people didn't like it, but I don't give a shit. I think it's I think it's uh 
I think it is definitely one of the best Halloween movies that's ever been made, and I'm I'm excited to look. I'm excited to see the next two. I'm sure that they're not going to be as good, but I, I'm still excited to give them a shot. Yeah, I I kind of I liked the 2018 ha- Halloween a lot. Over time, I kind of see some of its flaws more. Like it doesn't it doesn't hit quite as much for me as the original three um Mm. and and but but i that's not a that's not a condemnation of it either i think it's a really good movie and i think it's an interesting um branch to go on in rather than i think one of the things that's that i've kind of come to appreciate over time um i used to be very rigidly into like um well, this movie is the first movie in the canon. You know, this movie is the first movie. This movie is the second movie. And, right. the, and you can't make another one that invalidates the original second one because you either need to reboot it or you need to make a sequel to the sequel. But I've come now to this sort of place of like, no, it's awesome that there are two Halloween twos, you know, right. it's very cool that that exists. And it's so cool to see the two different takes on it. Um, and I think in that way, the 2018 Halloween is one, the best Halloween movie from a quality standpoint since Halloween three, at least. Um, and two, it's, it's just really interesting that it's a different take on, on a sequel. I don't, I'm a little, I almost wish that they would make <laughs> the future Halloween movies that they're doing their own like anthologies, maybe yeah. that continue to star Michael at the, at the center of them, but are different branches of that story but I know that's probably a pipe dream and they want to make a sequel to the 2018 one. And I think maybe I'm setting my expectations kind of low for those just to make sure that I'm not disappointed. Yeah, me too. I mean, to be honest, I set my expectations low for the 2018 one too, because I was very, very, very cautious about it. But um, I think it'd be fucking awesome. You know what I think? I think that they need to bring back fucking Silver Shamrock. It's time, motherfuckers. They can figure out a way to do it, dude. I would love to see with with what I just said in mind, where I don't I don't have a problem with remakes and stuff because I don't think that they invalidate the original. Mm-hmm. I would love to see a really skilled director um, take on a remake of Halloween Three, like like a really someone who has Carpenter's blessing and who understands the source material on a deep level. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Nobody comes to well, mind. I think remakes are a wonderful thing because of the fact, I mean, I know Glenn and I back in the early 2000s were so against remakes, but you have to realize that remakes also shed light on the original material. That's so right. at the time, a video or a movie at the time that was so hard to get when the remake came out, boom, there was a special edition of the original and it was easily accessible again. So that remakes are a good thing in a sense of, the original source material is going to be reintroduced. It's going to be accessible again, and you'll be able to enjoy it because at the end of the day, it's not like Star Wars where (laughs) the original version is trying to be, you know, stomped out, eradicated, erased. You know, if you want to see the original version of Halloween, go out to the store and buy it or go online and and buy a digital copy because it's accessible. Right. Exactly. (laughs) That's a good thing about remakes. And the even better thing about remakes is you don't have to watch the remake version. Just throw that disc in the garbage and watch the original. Hey, fuck this. Hey, I got a new coast. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Or sometimes a remake can be good, like John Carpenter's The Thing. It's Ooh. a remake. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what other movie that was a remake that was like fantastic other than The Thing. The Fly. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Oh, the fly. There you go. Yeah. You know, uh, the Hard fly to is. Watch, though. Woo. Yeah. No, but yeah. the fly goes back into the genre that I truly love. Um, not necessarily from a standpoint of a spiritual side, but more of because I just enjoy it as body horror. Mm-hmm. Um, body horror to me isn't as strong as a presence as it was maybe in the late '80s, early '90s because uh, between body horror or in anime or whatnot, it's the fusion of man and machine and 
being you know that sort of thing like like Videodrome and stuff like that which is a phenomenal film uh those type of movies aren't as popular anymore because of the fact that I, I don't know why they're not popular. <laughs> well, they're gross. Yeah, but I, I'm one of those few people who love those movies. So, but then again, you'd think they would be popular because I thought people liked gross shit. I mean, I think uh, you can you could make an argument that a movie like uh, like Midsummer is very much a body horror film, but it doesn't necessarily have the same kind of stuff in it of like merging of of the merging of body parts and stuff. I think that there's still some interesting movies coming out in that space though. I mean, things like, um, uh, uh, I saw the Void. color out of space. I still haven't watched that. Like a complete Nicholas cage. Room. I can't believe I haven't watched it yet, but, um, you should check it out. I, th- I, I will. I, I think you might dig it. Uh, I have a few I, horror I movies lined up for this month. Yeah. But it has, there been a film that literally has been a boundary. Like as soon as you hit that boundary, you kind of, re- you step back from horror as much like for example for me my boundary was cannibal holocaust as soon as i saw that movie it kind of killed the whole like what movie is gory and i know for a lot of horror movies especially when you're a kid or or a young teenager or in your early 20s you want to go for the limit you want to go to the absolute boundary because if you're insecure like me you want to be like well i know this movie and it's more obscure and more gory than your movie so therefore i'm better than you i'm like (laughs) no it doesn't work like that but like does any of you guys have that boundary like you hit that boundary i can't go any further what do you think pat it's interesting because i can't say that i have to me, it's always been about the storytelling, um, mm-hmm. and and it doesn't necessarily have to be like quality storytelling from an, uh, a literary perspective. It's just a film has to have, or a world has to have, like interesting lore and stories. To, and that's how I initially pulled myself through something like House of a Thousand Corpses because I was like, oh, there's an interesting world here that Zombie is creating. And then I came to realize how bad it was um, later on. Um, so what's interesting to me is I can watch some truly, I mean, I would never want to watch Cannibal Holocaust. I actually haven't seen it. I know enough from that, 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 that is well beyond my boundary for sure. You're not missing um, anything. <laughs> uh, but I think for me, it was more the, the combination of, I look at something like the saw series, which is the first three saw movies are films that I genuinely love. I think those are, they're excellent movies. The first one in particular is, um, I think should be required viewing for anyone who can, who can handle more violent, disturbing horror stuff. I mean, it's a, I think it's very brilliant. Um, And for me, I remember going to the theater to see the fourth movie and it has all these crazy traps in it that are really gruesome and gory and violent and horrifying and, and horrible. And not on the scale of what you're talking about with like finding the most gory thing. It's, there are certainly things that make saw look tame. Um, but but at the time, what 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 Saw Four was my boundary for that series because the twist in the end is garbage and it makes the whole movie it makes the whole movie just like retroactively seem bad. <laughs> so yeah. I think for me that's really more what it comes down to is it's less that I have a limit to the kinds of, I mean, <laughs> summer's disgusting. It's not really that I have a limit to the kinds of 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 um, of visual content. It's more, are you doing this? simply to push a, some kind of gore boundary or are you doing this in service to a really good story because if it's the latter i can put up with you can take it pretty far from me and i'll be able to deal with it again with my boundary definitely the sexual violence angle that has to be handled with an incredibly careful hand if that's okay. going to land with me at all i mean like that's why i don't i i will never watch game of thrones for example because the way that they treat rape in that story in that series is well beyond what I find acceptable for me personally in when I'm engaging with like ostensibly entertainment media. Um, so, so that's my kind of my biggest trigger, but beyond that, if it comes to like hacking up a body, if you're telling a great story, you can hack away uh, as long as it's in service to something better than just trying to show a lot of gore. Um, right. So. Right. I think my biggest the biggest thing for me is um, 
I tend to enjoy horror films. So there's like two different kinds of horror stories, basically. There's what I like to think of as tragedies and like I, what I like to think of as like judgments. In the tragedies, it's when horrible shit happens to good people. And uh, uh, judgments, it's when the horrible shit happens to evil people. Like it's, it's a morality tale. They're getting their comeuppance. Like pretty much every episode of Tales from the Crypt uh, is like a morality tale, you know, with a bad yeah. person getting their comeuppance. And those stories are great. Um, but generally speaking, I prefer like in my entertainment media, I prefer like likable characters, like characters I can root for, characters I can care about. Sure. Uh, and I like... I like, I like to see these characters be treated respectfully and given good story arcs and, you know, like they, they don't necessarily have to make it to the end of the damn movie. Like it's a horror movie. I expect that something horrible is probably going to happen. Uh, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe since the 2000s uh, and maybe it hasn't been so prevalent uh in the last couple of years but for a while there at least there was like a tendency like ro like when rob zombie was still hot shit there was like this real tendency to just sort of like have all these despicable people in yep. all of these movies yeah and like i'm supposed to sit through 90 minutes of these despicable protagonists doing their own despicable things and then encountering these other despicable people and you know it's just more despicable trash happening to despicable trash and i'm just kind of like that's not nice or you know maybe in some cases the protagonists are likable and nice but then like the story is written in such a way that it just comes across as too mean spirited and i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not quite sure how to explain what i mean by that but like to me there is there is a possibility for horror to be too mean spirited absolutely like, uh, yeah. the yeah the point of horror is not to be mean spirited not to like make you cry you know upset you so much that it makes you cry the point, the point is to scare you or to make you think, to keep you up at night, you know, and um, the best way to do that is to give us good, likable characters we can care about, and if you're going to ask somebody to sit through an hour and a half of shit, you know, you, you probably don't want to punish them by, by giving them these characters that, that you can like and root for but then just just totally putting them through the fucking meat grinder and not giving them any kind of opportunity to fight back or stand up for themselves or you know have any kind of arc or anything like that like i feel like a good example of a, of a good difference would be like uh something like texas chainsaw massacre versus house of a thousand corpses right mm -hmm. they're both similar kind of yeah. plots both about horrible people doing horrible things to innocent people um but the thing is as annoying as franklin is in, in texas chainsaw massacre I, I don't hate any of those characters like i don't I don't think any of those teenage characters in that movie deserve to have what happened to them happen to them or whatever, you know, it's not, they're not like totally despicable. And whereas, um, and, and, and also like, I don't know. Well, and Texas Chainsaw is a great movie because it was doing things that people hadn't really done before too. I mean, it was, it was exploring new frontiers in horror storytelling, the original one. I mean, it's not like it was the very first movie to, 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 to do everything that it does, but it's in service to trying to push the envelope of storytelling beyond just showing a bunch of really fucked up gross stuff. Whereas right. house of a thousand corpses, I mean, 
doesn't do anything new other than maybe put some of the twisted garbage that, <laughs> that that was existing in in more obscure <laughs> horror literature on well, screen or in you know it's it's well it's it goes back to also <sighs> house of a thousand corpses halloween um what is that other one that he did uh devil's, devil's rejects, rejects all those movies mm-hmm. it falls under that same belief of kindness and compassion in a character or anything like that is inherently stupid and cruel and pessimistic is inherently smart that's why sometimes when you watch shows like rick and morty you know rick pessimistic but he's the smart one uh, more you know morty who's who's friendly and, and whatnot is naive and stupid and you as you could see in the horror movies those naive stupid people get killed off in the, in the instant and the pessimistic people who drag the cigarette and go fuck 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 they fuck 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 are those the ones who last the longest and you're like why do they deserve to live and the, then the people who i don't know were friendly get killed off well that's the way it's like in the real world not necessarily it's not <laughs> but i not think my people... world <laughs> <laughs> but no it goes back to that crap and that's sometimes i think people take that way too seriously right like i understand if setting things are supposed to happen in horror but i just feel like there's a difference between horror and just telling awful mean cruel mean spirited stories that aren't entertaining i mean well yeah i mean the first 10 minutes of halloween the the of halloween the rob zombie one right off the bat the first 10 minutes you kind of want to shut it off because all it is is just a white trash couple screaming at each other everybody's screaming and hearing awful stuff to each other it's just so much yeah yeah and, and by contrast, you look at, I mean, I, I definitely think the original Halloween is one of the, the, the greatest horror movies ever, for sure. Um, and if you look at that movie, it's not even, no one has made a, a better movie in that style, in my opinion, since then. And that movie is not a gore fest. It has uncomfortable, violent moments in it that are frightening, but the real terror there isn't showing a bunch of gore and blood and violence it's 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 when michael's in the background of a shot right and Mm -hmm. when and when and when the door you hear the door broken in and you know that he's coming it's 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 the moments before he strikes that are really the terrifying thing um and and you know zombie has never understood that uh in any of his filmmaking so i think uh now probably be a good time to wrap things up that's fair at least for this visit yeah, just what worked um thank you both so much for joining me today it's been a whole lot of fun having absolutely having this reunion of sorts it's nice to see both my brothers in set and set <laughs> and, and and discuss the truly important things in life monsters <laughs> let's everybody wish each other a happy halloween and a merry Samhain guys I, I thank you so much for coming on the show it means a, a great deal to me to have you here and and you know now people know that you both actually exist you're not just <laughs> fictional characters i made up on my website uh, uh, but thank you very much and and uh, i just want to wish you both a happy halloween and a merry Samhain and and i hope that all, may all the blessings of, of set and the ancestors be upon you both yep you too buddy absolutely <laughs> thanks for having me too it's a blast yes it was a pleasure to be here
Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this sermon, and you'd like to read some more, please check out DesertOfSet.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. Set bless.